Hello and welcome to the Leathercraft Masterclass with me, Phil. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking a little bit about the quintessentially English traditional briefcase. Now this is an iconic design in Leathercraft that we're all familiar with. And for the first time, I've come out with a video course to enable people to build along, follow along, and come up with their very own traditional briefcase. Now this has been a long time coming. This is one of the most requested courses on the masterclass from the students and in indeed a lot of followers on social media. Everybody wanted to see me create one of these English style briefcases. Maybe it's because I'm English, I don't know. But whatever the case, here it is. I've answered that with a series of videos to come up with what you see here today. So this is the traditional iconic design of a briefcase that you would have seen anywhere up to and beyond 100 years ago, and is still in use today, still very practical for laptops, carrying around notepads, documents, and for people in a professional environment where they wanna look smart and have something that's durable and practical that's gonna last many, many decades of use. Now, there are a handful of video courses in the masterclass that are very challenging to a lot of people. And what I didn't want for this course was to create something that only the top tier students, the people with the, in the upper echelons of leathercraft skill could achieve. I wanted this design to be for people who want to create, who haven't got the most expensive machinery, who haven't got access to all the different kind of tools that maybe someone who's been spending a long time in leathercraft has. I wanted to create a course for you guys and for anybody out there who is a beginner, beginner intermediate, and they can still take on this course. If you know how to cut leather, if you know how to stitch leather, then this course is going to be achievable by someone at that level. And if you're advanced, this is still a great course because there are so many other things that you can add to this design to make it more advanced, to make it unique to you, essentially. So I'm gonna break down what I've done differently in this course to enable anybody who has basic level of experience in Leathercraft to achieve a creation such as this. So what makes this grandfather of Leathercraft design, the godfather, one of the top Leathercraft projects that many people put right up there as one of their all-time goals to create? First of all, let's talk about the gussets. Now, a lot of the briefcases you'll see whether it's a double gusset, whether it's a triple gusset and beyond, a lot of the time the gusset is actually one very wide thin strip of leather that is then partitioned off with a partition stitched in place and it works like an accordion. Now the difficulty with that is when you have a very long and very wide piece of leather, you limit the amount of people that can actually get hold of that. Now you might be able to have a hide split down professionally, but then that becomes very expensive. You might be able to get one piece for the exterior and then order another hide that's a thinner piece for the, you know, for the gusset section, but that's quite difficult to do and not many tanneries or suppliers offer that, especially in small order quantities. And you might be thinking, okay, well, what about running it through a manual pull splitter? Well, that is possible, but once you start getting four, five, six inches wide, it very much limits the amount of people that have the skill to use a manual splitter and to even sharpen it to that level of sharpness and it becomes very difficult to achieve. So what I have done differently is I've gone for two medium thin strips of leather. So each piece is individual. So it isn't one piece that goes over the partition and stitches in is actually two pieces. So the first piece is here, the second piece is here. So that allows you to install two separate strips. So if you are using a pull-through splitter, it's only about 60 millimeters wide. So it's not very difficult to pull that length through. And if you don't have a splitter, I've actually included and I actually used in this course, I didn't use a splitter at all. I used a basic hand tool that cost me eight pounds to split this leather down from two millimeters to one millimeter. So we half that thickness to allow the gusset to be a little bit more flexible so that you can actually put larger things in the case and it will expand a little bit to accommodate. So I use something that everybody can get hold of in order to split this down. And I show you that technique 
which has been honed over many years, but it's doable and relatively easy for anybody to do. So this is the first change that I made. Instead of making the gussets one piece, I made them two piece. And the thing I like about that as well is it adds a little bit of consistency because regardless of if you, how many partitions you have, how many parts of the accordion you have, the outer edges here are always cut edge unless you did some kind of binding. So you would have a cut edge and then folded over edges or turned edges all the way along and then another cut edge. Whereas when you do it this way, you will allow three burnished edges, which in my mind gives a little bit more uniformity to the design. So I actually think it's a benefit in that case, but it does make it much simpler to do for the vast majority of people that probably already have that hand tool I'm talking about. Another change that I made was I don't actually give the length of the gusset. What I encourage people to do is follow my instructions, follow along with the guidance, and we actually create a custom length gusset. And that means if there's any variation in your cutting ability, if you followed my instructions, but maybe you cut it fractionally too short or fractionally too large, the gusset is actually custom designed to the size of the front panel and the partition. So it doesn't matter if you made a mistake, you can still rectify it in that way. And that makes the design a little bit more forgiving than if I just gave you the exact measurements. And if you messed up anywhere, the design is all ruined. And the tops of the gussets, as you might be able to see here, are actually an edge binding. Very simple technique using a thin strip of leather. And that just means the top of the gussets, which is a thinner material, just adds a lot more durability to it than if you just burnished it. Another design change that I created was the position of the lock is completely custom to the bag that you're creating. So along with the gussets, if you decided that you wanted to create a bag or a case rather that was slightly larger than this or slightly smaller than this, any kind of variation could be accommodated with the techniques that I'm using in the course. So this particular lock position isn't predetermined before the course. I teach you exactly how to set the lock so that the top is perfectly straight, the sides are at a right angle and everything is just perfect. And then once you've created that once, you can then note down the position of the lock. And as long as you keep the design the same, it's always gonna fit from case to case. So this here has its own custom position, but someone who's following on from the course, they might have theirs set a millimeter higher or a millimeter lower. It really depends on the tolerances of how close they've kept to the design that I teach in the course. Now, inside the bag, in the central partition, a lot of people like to have pen loops, card holders, mobile phone pockets, things like that added to the central partition. Now this case is actually designed to be a slim document case, something that's going to be lighter weight, but you're still gonna be able to carry your laptop in there, even two laptops, uh, iPad or some kind of tablet, you'll be able to add notebooks in there, regular books. There's a lot of things that you can fit in here, but it is designed to be a slim, lightweight case. But in this case, you can add that if you're advanced enough and you want to add accessories to that central partition, that is something that you can do. And if you're a beginner and you want to keep it clean and simple, and easier to do, then you can just leave it out as I have here. In fact, I've made cases in the past and had them myself, especially when creating prototypes, I generally keep them and use them. But I've had all sorts of accessories and I really rarely ever use them. I keep my phone in my pocket. If I have a pen, it's in my coat. Uh, generally business cards and things like that, I'll also keep in a little wallet in my coat. I don't tend to carry these kind of accessories in the bag. Now, you might be different and your customers might be different, but that is something that I've left out in this course. So if you want to add it, you can. And if you want to leave it out like I have, then also that is another option as well. Now, another thing that I haven't added into this course, and I'll explain the reasons why, are buckle closures on the front. Now you may have seen briefcases in the past where we have a central lock, and then we have either a strap that goes around the bag or you have a piece stitched in here with a strip of leather coming down with holes in it, which attaches to another strip of leather holding a buckle and then you buckle it in every time. 
Now, that is also something you can add to this design. It has a more of a minimalist look to it, and in my opinion, more of a modern look to it. And I do remember when I was at school, I had a briefcase. I'm not gonna say it was similar to this. It was a lot cheaper than this, but it had a central lock, okay? Probably stamped sheet metal or something like that. But it did have the strap closures with a buckle. And I can't say I ever used it. And it was always dangling around and, you know, because it was a pain to, you know, sit down, undo the buckle on one side, undo the buckle of the other side, open it, blah, 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 and then when you leave, lock it back up, do the buckle back. It was a kind of a, a procession, a procedure every single time. And it got boring very, very quickly. So I don't actually like them. I don't mind the look of it, but I do feel that this has a sleeker, more modern feel to it. I think is more practical. And when you're using a lock like this, which is solid cast brass, solid metal, uh, strong metal, then you can have no real issues with breaking or damage due to putting a heavier load in here. There's only so much you can carry in there. And this solid brass lock is going absolutely nowhere. It's solidly riveted in place. And that will last for many, many years. If you want to add the strap closures, then add them. There's really does come down to personal tastes. And also know that this design is actually unlined. So if ever you really wanted to change your mind afterwards and, and actually add them, then you can stitch it to the top quite easily because it's, there's no lining on the inside. It is uh, using finished back leather. Then you can unstitch this part, take it off, and then add your own buckles, add your attachments to the top, and then create a completely different design. And again, this lock here, if ever you lost the key and it was locked, or say for instance, something happened, it seized up inside, or some kind of damage went on and you needed to replace the lock, all you need to do is unstitch the sides here, leave the front alone, so this, this bottom base here rather, bring it forward, so bring that panel forwards. On the back, there is a small disc of leather, you unstitch that, and then you have direct access to the lock where you can change it over for another one. So it is designed to be fixed if ever something goes wrong with the lock. So it's not um, the absolute end of the world if ever you need to change the lock. And talking of edges, I've kept this very simple with a clean burnished edge. Now this is also unique to this course. I've come up with a recipe for an edge stain. Now edge stain is typically uh, a dye mixed with some kind of uh, hide glue, also called pearl glue. Um, sometimes people have used things like uh, wheat starch, things like that, to mix with the dye to create an edge stain, something that will actually seal the edge as well as stain it. Now these traditional recipes are great, but I thought it could do with a modern update with something that was a little bit more modern, a little bit tougher and more durable. And I've come up with an edge stain recipe that allows you to not only stain the edge the color that you want, in this case we're working with navy, so I've gone for navy, but also a recipe that bonds the fibers of the leather after burnishing together to create a durable edge that not only shines and polishes up really, really easily, but it was also very scuff resistant and durable so that you keep that polish for many years rather than just have a case that's really nicely finished on the edges with a wax, and then after a few outings, it really starts to lose its luster. This is something that lasts a long time. So traditional recipe with a modern update, and I include my recipe for leather edge stain in one of the early courses, or one of the early videos in this build. So what do you need to get started? What would you need in order to build this case? Well, the leather that I'm using here is in general for the partitions, for the front panel, for the main body of the bag, including the flap. I'm using two millimeter English bridal leather, but you don't have to use bridal leather, okay? That's a fallacy, you don't need to create it with bridal leather. It doesn't have to be from the equestrian industry. Any vegetable tanned leather that is firm is going to be suitable for this. Uh, a brilliant one is Botero from Italy or Butero if, uh, if you're Italian. That's a really great one to use uh, instead of English bridal leather. If you're in the States, um, you know, firm saddle leather 
in the five ounce range is gonna be perfect for this. And as well, saddle leather a lot of the time uh, comes natural, so you can have a real natural look that patinas over the years, which is gonna get nice and dark around the handles and around the areas that you touch mostly. You know, use this as a blank canvas. You wanna to add to it, you wanna subtract to it, you wanna use different leathers. It's just a great course for anyone that wants to have a go at making this and then make it unique to them. Uh, Hardware-wise, you can source this from, uh, as I did from Abbey England, uh, buckleguy.com is another one. Uh, MM Colombo uh, in Italy is another place that you can source this, this type of hardware. In fact, they have one that's very similar to this. But I always encourage people to go for solid metal. Whatever that metal is, go for solid metal. This is brass. It did actually come with a finish on it, so I had to soak it in acetone to get it off dry it out thoroughly, and then re-lube the internal parts. But this is raw brass now, so it's gonna patina nicely, which is, is it's my kind of thing. So uh, I don't like it to look too perfect and too buffed and too shiny. I like it with that kind of raw brass, um, which I think is just much more interesting, really. So how much does a bag like this cost to build? So my costs are, and this was, bear in mind, this was from one shoulder of leather. So another design consideration that I just remembered I had was I created this so that it could fit onto one shoulder. So you don't have to buy, you know, double butts or a side or two shoulders in order to create this. One shoulder uh, should do it. I believe uh, it was 12 square foot, so that gives you an idea. That cost me 60 pounds. The hardware, I believe this was 25, and a few other bits and bobs such as D-rings and rivets. Uh, it's gonna be around 30 pounds. And the steel strip, so this handle is actually attached to a steel strip, and so are these D-handles here, so that it can be lifted without distorting or deforming or stretching the leather. Uh, that cost me eight pounds, and I think I've got five of them in the pack. So in all, around 100 pounds, or maybe just slightly under, but around 100 pounds. Now, obviously that doesn't include labor costs. You know, I'm not factoring my time there. I'm not also uh, adding the cost of my tools. It's just materials alone. So if you already have most of the tools and you will have most of the tools, then it's not that expensive to create. I could have created a larger one with more gussets. If I added another partition, that would have pushed me over the edge and I would have needed at least two shoulders or even a side of, uh, of veg tan in order to create that. So I wanted it to be not too expensive. Beginners can still do it, but it's still a fun course for people who are intermediate and advanced where you can add all your own accessories. So there's something here for everybody and that is why it's taken me so long to come out with a English briefcase course, something that I've mulled over in my mind for years. I wanted it to be accessible to everybody. So what do you do next if you want to get started and you want it to create your own briefcase or you want to learn the techniques in the briefcase to create your own designs, then head to leathercraftmasterclass.com where we have a selection of video plans for you to choose from. Choose the one that fits you best and fits your needs the best, and then join thousands of other students who are already learning from the Leathercraft Masterclass, learning new techniques and all the secrets of leathercraft from history up until today. And remember, right now, there is a free course available on the leathercraftmasterclass.com, which is a hand stitching course. It's a video for anybody who wants to see how I hand stitch, but also if you're new to leather craft and you wanna learn the techniques and you wanna get it right from the ground up, then head to leathercraftmasterclass.com, enter your email address, and I will immediately send you a free video which shows you how I do it. Now that's not gonna last, I do periodically change what I offer people, whether it's a video or PDF download. So don't forget to go right now, grab that video for free, and I will see you in the Leathercraft Masterclass.